ಲಾ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಐಎಎಸ್ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಭರವಸೆಯ ಬೆಳಕು Hello sir, uh, welcome to La Excellence IAS and congratulations for securing 136 rank yeah. of our UPSC 2022 and uh, before starting or before going into the various details of this examination, I would like to know about your introduction and journey till now what you have gone through sir. Yeah, so first of all, thank you. Thanks thank you, for the wishes. Uh, I, I am a native of Bhuvneshwar Odisha. I started my schooling at Bhuvneshwar only and been there till 12th. and after 12th i gave my j i gave my j examination and i secured a rank and got into iit kanpur uh, for electrical engineering degree and after my four years of electrical engineering degree i joined adobe systems as a software development engineer and parallelly in the second semester of my fourth year i started my preparation of upsc my first attempt was upsc 2021 Okay. and this was uh, in which i gave interview but couldn't make it to the final list and this was my second interview in which i secured the rank okay. yeah that's nice, pretty nice. much sums up congratulations once again sir thank you and uh, before getting into another details many aspirants who are coming into upsc they come with a question ki agar nahi hoga to kya hoga what should i be there should be a second option which i should always be prepared about because many aspirants who come with a, that question uh if you can answer that will be helpful sir yeah so first of all i'll uh, like to clarify my situation i started my preparation in my fourth year uh, second semester and it was when the covid lockdown was there i was at home uh, i didn't have to attend the college physically so i had pretty much time to cover up my foundation part so it was e- a bit easy for me and then as a backup option i went on to join my job as a as a software development engineer at tofi and uh, i parallelly prepared for the examination and then last year uh, in uh, july af- uh, during the end of july 2022 uh, which is midway between the prelims and mains gap i resigned from the job and started full fledged i mean uh, continued my full fledged preparation for upsc in my second attempt so this was my journey and uh, as far as uh, the decision is concerned i feel that uh, a backup option is good when it uh, comes to comforting ourselves but yeah there are some pros and cons like while when we have a backup option we have to keep in mind that we don't lax get lax in in our preparation yes. so we have to keep it in check but if one can manage with a backup option then it's always great because it gives a con- sense of confidence yes. to taking more risks ha sir so but uh, saying so i'll also like to add that if one feels confident that i am prepared with my subjects and i am ready to give my best performance in the examination then i think one can take one or two attempts without job uh, like that was the psychology which helped me come into my decision okay okay and your journey was unique wherein you started preparation while you were into a job yeah. and uh, many working professionals are uh, thinking of taking up this examination what would be your suggestion to those working professionals when they think of taking up this examination yeah so definitely i have talked to a lot of my friends who are in a similar situation they are yes. working in a job and they want to attempt give an attempt in the examination uh, i think more than uh, more than the interest towards giving an attempt in this examination one needs to realize that if he or she is actually interested in the exam or not so i think a basic thing can be to start reading newspapers and start reading the basic stuff and continue it at least for one two months i think in those one to one two months time one gets to know pretty well that if this exam is meant for me i mean if i'm to- actually interested towards Sorry. the examination if it is the case then one can i think start full fledged preparation whether and again it depends upon the confidence level if there is high confidence that uh, one can one is a, one will be able to score high then one may take the risk and leave the backup option and give one to attempt and if there is a little bit of lack of confidence then one can start giving examination parallelly and i think by the end of first attempt one would be very clear that if he or she is actually like decided to leave job or continue with thought, with job or not yes sir yes sir and uh, we always say every i mean 1000 miles of journey starts with single step yeah. so we, we, your journey towards upsc uh, was it something which motivated you or passionate towards this examination sir yeah so uh, what I, drove I, you for because 
being an iit graduate having a good amount of job or a better salary and everything yeah. there sh- and was there any reason for you to come towards upsc as a career uh, yeah so uh, i in my third year i at- i attended a research internship at adobe itself Okay. Uh, from which the pre-placement offer was extended. Yep. So in my research internship, I got to know the got to know the in and out of the corporate setup and how the work goes on there. So uh, I wasn't particularly interested in that kind of work uh, for the rest of my life. And also uh, there were other factors like one uh, one factor is always the uh, family uh, family considerations. They everyone has an aspiration has towards UPSC. And more than that, the thing was. Uh, i wanted to work in things which are diverse and which are not monotonous and then i also wanted to have an impact on the lives of people and to make a real good for them which will be lasting so those considerations i think shaped my mind towards upsc preparation and when i tried to balance it with my corporate job and my future prospects in corporate job i thought that upsc might be a better option for me oh nice i mean uh... in this journey sir was there anyone who was a real uh, pushback for you towards this journey because it's a long journey of 2 yeah. years which you have to go through and uh, wh- who was your motivation or what was your pushing factor for this examination yeah so definitely i'll say that uh, majority of the time of my upsc preparation has been at my home so i the major motivation has always been my parents and my siblings and also my relatives and neighbor neighborhood they have all all these people have always motivated me morally and mentally mm-hmm. uh, to be strong enough to be resilient enough to uh, excel in this exam and to at least give my personal best and after this uh, mental aspects okay. there is also uh, the mentoring aspect uh-huh. there have been peers there have been seniors there have been teachers who have always guided me towards the right path Mm-hmm. and also encouraged me at my lows so okay. i think everyone has a role in my success <laughs> nice sir so that's what um, because this examination is not about an individual it is financial physical emotional yeah. there are various factors which play and un sab ka milne se hi we find a result and yeah, yeah sure day. and um, ne- coming to the preparation part sir because many aspirants uh, still uh, doesn't figure out or they have lot of questions about pehla how to get into the prelims what approach should be for the prelims uh, is the major question which many aspirants are still struggling today so what yeah. will be your word of advice for them sir yeah i think uh, for prelims uh, at least before this year's paper uh, it was pretty much clear that one needs to be very thorough with the foundation part and then repeated revisions tests this will if one does this uh, religiously then one will be able to clear at least one will be able to give his or her personal best so that was that's what my personal psychology was and after this year's paper i think that uh, a more in depth understanding of topics is required because uh, at the end of the day we have that foundation topic and we cannot go on increasing our source of syllabus because that way will lose out things which uh, which are basic yes sir. so we have to be i think we have to stick with the limited source and more thorough and depth understanding of the topics will help in these kind of papers and i think uh, upsc still has many scope of eliminations and uh, if one need if one understands the topics and uh, very clearly then one can make out and figure out some intuition towards the statements or options which are not very clear and very apparent to oneself yes sir yes, yes. and um, then coming to the second phase of this examination yeah. that is mains So what was your approach with respect to essay particularly because we see that essay and ethics are the major uh, subject for papers which help us to get better uh, rank yeah. at the end so what was your approach particularly with respect to essay sir because there will be aspirants who will be writing mains uh, for 2023 so yeah. it will be a word of advice for them too yeah so for sl particularly cite the fact that in my first attempt i secured 108 marks and in my second attempt Uh, it was 129 marks so i think this jump has helped me a lot in achieving the rank and for that essay i like to highlight what all changes i made in my second attempt uh, in my first attempt i was thorough that i have to first i have to brainstorm the topic understand the topic brainstorm it and then i'll write the topic uh, in my second attempt i improvised upon it 
that while for example while interpretation i tried to pick out each and every word and keywords of the topic mm -hmm. and then i tried to figure out two meanings one was the literal meaning mm -hmm. one was the in inherent meaning that the word, the word has. has so that way i was able to clearly interpret the topic uh, and after that the brainstorming part comes where uh, the special addition to my second attempt was that i started delineating pages like for introduction i'll be giving one or 1.5 pages for conclusion i'll be giving one page and for this many different dimensions i'll give this much this much pages mm -hmm. this helped me to maintain a balance between the different dimensions which i had decided for my topic okay. so that way my essay i think went on a more balanced manner and then while writing uh, there is a particular consideration that we have to uh, maintain the flow. Uh, by saying flow, we need to understand. I, I usually quote this example to my friends that uh, while writing an essay, we have to think it as a movie. Mm -hmm. So movie without an intermission, basically. Correct. So yeah. there shouldn't be a abrupt scene cut, huh. and the movie should be logical. logical. Like each sequence should uh, should explain the preceding sequence. So those kind of thought process and while writing my essay has helped me okay. and apart from that I'll uh, add one one more point to my interpretation part that I particularly started figuring out what are the different dimensions to the topic is. So more and more dimension I explore the less and less uh, examples uh, are required. For example if I figure out three or four dimensions then for each dimension I'll be writing three or max to max three or four examples. Yes. So that maintains a balance and uh, prevents us from overdoing with examples. So uh -huh, I think uh -huh. these things help in essay. True, true, true. And uh, aspirants usually confuse between or they uh, have a dilemma uh, when choosing an essay while writing, whether to go with philosophical essay or uh, any general studies related topic. So what was your choice sir, in previous two examinations which you encountered? Yeah, so uh, initially like before my, my first attempt, uh, the paper used to be so that one section was completely theoretical, the GS part and one section was completely philosophical part. So uh, naturally, <laughs> like any other candidate, I was more inclined towards the GS topic part. So my preparation was somewhat biased towards that manner yes. only. And I had this thing clear that uh, philosophical essays are nothing but GS essays, which are cryptic, uh, uh, which are cryptic in uh, language. So we, have, something like yeah. <laughs> so we have to just break down it and convert it into a GS topic. And then we can easily write down the GS topic, which we are prepared. So that was my psychology. But after the 2021 and also in the 2022 attempt, uh, I saw that majority of the questions are philosophical. philosophical. So I think UPSC needs us to first decipher the topic and then write the write thing. It. So I think the basic philosophy, basic psychology that uh, we have to first decrypt it, uh, put it into simple words, and then we have to write a GS type topic. topic. That things remains the same, uh -huh. but. Uh, we have to interpret it properly. So there is, I, th I don't think there is a choice anymore that we ha we are choosing GS topic or philosophical, philosophical topic. Though. We have to go with philosophical topic. But saying so, uh, I think one needs to consider that uh, each of the topic has its own interpretation. So yes. while attempting the paper, if it is philosophical top uh, topics everywhere, so we have to give like one to two minutes maybe mm -hmm. for each of the topic. To the first check should be that if I'm uh, if I'm outrightly not able to uh, figure out the meaning or I'm totally unaware of some of the words, then I can easily leave, leave it. Yes. I have other options. And But if I am somehow able to decipher the meaning of the essay, yes. then I'll give one or two minutes to the essay to think of what many different dimensions I can think of, what many different examples I can think of. That mm -hmm. way I'll be, I am sure that I, am, I will be able to fill up, let's say 11 or 11.5 pages. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these type of considerations are required more often I think right now. So I mean writing was your regular practice sir because essay takes a toll mm -hmm. of energy and uh, this thing. So how many essays do you think at an average a student uh, could or should practice before getting into the examination hall? Yeah so before my prelims examination I didn't uh, write much. Uh, I didn't do much answer writing especially for essay I didn't uh, I, I think I didn't do any essay writing before my prelims. I always did the practice part between prelims and means. Uh, as far as how many question, how many essays should be attem attempted, I think it matters about our level of confidence. Like I think the stopping point is where we feel that we are confident enough to write any topic given, thrown at us, uh, provided we interpret it. interpret it. So I, in my first attempt, I wrote somewhere around eight, eight uh, to nine essays. In my second attempt, I did some more rigorous practice to be more comfortable with 
philosophical essays. So it it hovered somewhere till fifteen. Okay, okay. Yeah, nice. Sir. I mean, that would be a really great advantage for the people who will be writing this time. Yeah. Uh, with respect to ethics, sir, because yeah. again, that is one of the big question mark. What sources should be referred and uh, what should be the approach towards ethics which we should develop for this examination? Yeah. yeah so for ethics, I didn't have a formal source. I mostly followed. Uh, there, there is one senior IS officer who is Avad Singhal, okay. 2019 batch, I think. Yes, sir. he wrote his blog and he had some notes shared in that blog so i uh, throughout my preparation i followed his notes it is very less like somewhere around 10 to 15 pages i think so i used to read it up and apart from this there were some more additions to my sources like i tried to collect many different quotes and examples for each of the keywords Keyword. in the syllabus okay and i also tried to prepare formal definitions for each of the keywords in the syllabus so these three things were mainly my uh, guiding principles yes. in my essay pre ethics preparation sir great sir great and how about optional sir um, yeah my optional was electrical engineering okay. and uh, i chose very rarely uh, yeah. <laughs> aspirants actually try for so why again uh, was that electrical yeah so uh, my btech graduation was in electrical engineering so two things so the first i thought that uh, like 40 50% of the syllabus is already completed in my graduation and i did uh, did study properly in my graduation so i had some sense of confidence there second i thought that if i choose any other uh, subject as my optional there would be many other people who would be well versed with the topic having their degree in that so i thought that uh, maybe electrical will give me a give me an edge over yeah, others Uh, but i think i didn't capitalize it well because in my first attempt i scored uh, one uh, 237 marks mm -hmm. in my optional uh, in which paper 1 okay. was 146 and paper 2 was 91 oh, paper 2 was, was very low, low and i think that was the main reason why i couldn't make it to the list and in my second attempt i particularly <laughs> tried to course correct whatever wrong i was doing and luckily i i got 285 in my second attempt in my optional and mm. i think in my second, second attempt that helped me get the rank <laughs> so, uh, so there was paper 2 which got a boost this time yeah my mm. paper 2 score was 139 this time oh. paper 1 146 remained the same second same. time also uh -huh. but paper 2 became 91 to 139 okay. so that was the jump and uh, as far as my preparation is concerned i didn't particularly follow uh, the source uh, the standard so books which are uh, prescribed uh, because i had less time for preparation initially so i thought that i'll go with my class notes from my college and then uh, i tried to get online videos uh, video courses uh, which are available on youtube and tried to cover up topics yes, especially from paper 2 but paper 2 also needs some uh, fundamental understanding which i was lacking uh, i tried to correct it in my second attempt mm -hmm. i um, i subscribed to um, study materials that are available for electrical engineering on market okay. i read it to fill the gaps gap mm -hmm. areas which were there in my first attempt mm -hmm. and uh, after filling those gap and practice from csc previous year papers then esc also has its previous year papers yes. so i practiced a lot of questions and those things helped me gain a confidence and also uh, i was more comfortable with handling difficult questions in the examination great great because again as electrical sunte hi people usually get <laughs> feared of it but still the approach what you gave will be definitely helpful for the upcoming aspirants who will be willing to take up that yeah. uh, with respect to gs1 gs2 and gs3 sir uh, what do you think uh, what helps better for the aspirants who are taking up because uh, majoritively we have seen this year paper many could not get in due to csat yeah and uh, there are many fresher uh, I mean first time aspirants who are writing mains so they are into a very big question ki how to cover in this uh, short period of time that is next 2 3 months yeah. these general studies papers is what is the question which i have got majority so what will be your advice for them sir yeah so for i think gs1 gs2 gs3 uh, there is a bit na uh, uniqueness in each of the paper uh, particularly citing gs3 it is more more of current affairs yes. oriented these days so i think as more detailed understanding of current affairs topics and a uh, birds eye view over every important topic, topic which is there in the news is important 
apart from that we have the standard sources even in gs also gs3 also we have the those standard topics for example in economics so there will be some standard topics which will be there so uh, we can try to maximize our score in that those standard topics and uh, for the current affairs topic we have to be aware uh, of the topics these are uh, these are mostly uh, concentrated on the content right. part then there is a whole different ball game in uh, while writing the answers in examination that's a different skill so i think for that repeated answer writing practice is required Re writing different tests and uh, at regular okay. frequency is very important. So while answer writing, I think particularly, first of all, we have to maintain that presentation part, introduction, body, conclusion, and then if any pictography is uh, apt, apt for the situation or my content, then it should be added. Those things are basics. But uh, the question comes, uh, the main distinction I, uh, comes, I think, where people are less aware of the topic. Like there are many questions where people are less aware of the topic and many people will choose to leave it. Many people will uh, choose to just make it a blind blind guess. So those things I think should be avoided. Uh, me particularly uh, uh, followed that I have to attempt all the questions. So when, uh, when it comes to the questions where I don't know the answer or I'm unaware of the theme, then I try to write a logical, uh, logical correlation towards a nearby topic which is known to me. For example, if there is something very specific about, uh, uh, let's say, a cybersecurity topic, and I'm not aware of that specific topic, I'll write something related to cybersecurity, which somewhat justifies the question statement. Mm -hmm. So that way, I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that that's not a good answer, but that will fetch me some, some, marks. some marks. So it's better than yeah. writing nothing. Uh -huh. And Something is better than nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yes. so that was my psychology. And I, I personally felt that if I'm able to attempt all the questions in all my papers, then somehow I'll get into the list. Yes. And then uh, how much better I am able to write in each of the question will help me decide how much marks I get. So that was the thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> Great. Um, and usually, sir, generally coming to this examination, Every failure actually beats on the aspirant one step behind or many more steps behind what he has pushed forward. Yeah. So your first attempt, you went till interview and uh, when it did not come out. So what was your, uh, again, thought process where you uh, gained the energy up? Because this bar is, is time ka paper, agar hum dekh rahe, ki this, uh, the paper this time, many aspirants are like, ki should I take up this uh, examination further or not? So, what will be your word of advice or word of thought which an aspirant should have when he encounters any failure, particularly with respect to this exam, sir? Yeah. So, in this regard, I want to say that uh, if the paper is difficult or if the paper becomes uh, unattemptable, then it's for everyone. everyone. So, I think that factor shouldn't decide the fact that if I am going to attempt the examination anymore or not. So. Uh, naturally, there is a frustration over there uh, that seeing that kind of paper, uh, one gets irritated. Uh -huh. And if I'm unable, like if I'm able to answer, uh, let's say, 80, 90 questions in my test series, and I'm in my actual examination, I'm unable to answer 70 questions, then it naturally gives a sense of irritation. So that is natural. But one needs to also understand that that is same for all. Uh -huh. uh, if not all, at least majority, majority of them. True. So that shouldn't be a deciding factor. But saying so. Uh, if this kind of paper comes, then I think that gives a reality check to us that if if in this kind of paper we are not even sure about let's say 30 questions, 20, 30 questions if, are, if we are not able, we are not sure and uh, we are not able to score let's say 50 marks, then there is some serious mistake in our parts, like in our preparation journey. Then we have to course correct it, we have to check that if we are doing the right things or not. Because I think that if we are, uh, we if we are able to check our basics then somewhat minimum score like 50 60 marks are assured then thereafter the extra marks which we have to score depends on how well we prepare so that is the thing and uh, if we need to drop from the examination i think one need to consider that if the interest is still intact or not uh -huh. and if interest is intact then are the si situational situation. constraints suitable or not like many many would be having financial constraints yes. and other kind of constraints for which they may need to drop the examination those kind of considerations are uh, i think acceptable, acceptable. but uh, not the paper not the paper thing. Yeah. Paper. True, sir. 
and uh, usually when an aspirant comes for preparation uh, he is being advised to stay away from social media dosto ko dur rakh le don't be with friends uh, avoid everything in your life uh, whichever is pleasureful for you or whichever is entertainment for you so what was your life sir because do you think that should be the life which actually an aspirant should because uh, i have seen that many aspirants in this process of examination are getting themselves into an isolation and going into depression or frustration or anger something like this mm. so what was your lifestyle and what would be your advice for the aspirants for their journey like yeah so uh, i think i'll start with my my experience uh, i started preparation from my home and uh, my parents were uh-huh. around me and that was a great emotional support uh, always uh, i also came into this trap and i also tried to isolate myself from social media but not completely like, like i was active on whatsapp mm-hmm. i was active on telegram and to some extent facebook also mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yeah uh, i tried to isolate myself for let's say the initial 4 5 months but soon i realized that that's that's not adding much to my preparation mm-hmm. because uh, one thing we need to consider that the end of this examination process is personality test mm. and i don't think mm-hmm. we would be developing our personality if we are isolating Isolate. ourselves we we need to be social and also i think uh, one trait of personality is to be disciplined hmm. and if we are unable to control our addict addiction towards uh, social, social media, media then i think there is problem in our personality Absolutely. so we need to mend it Barker. and just avoiding it may help at times but i i don't think it's a usual remedy for the situation mm-hmm. so i think uh, the consideration should be uh, we should avoid addiction we shouldn't avoid social media totally we should avoid we should be more in control of ourselves rather than avoiding friends families relatives etc mm-hmm. uh, so that was kind of my guiding principle after the initial 4 5 months i was totally uh, active in all social media but uh, for exa- if i cite me if i may cite an example yes. uh, let's say we have these in- instagram reels yeah, these yeah. days <laughs> so those i think are kind of giving a boost to our addiction yes. so we aren't adding those aren't adding much value but if we are continuously just scrolling it scrolling. then we are just wasting our time and we are getting more and more addicted to addicted. it so those things i think should be avoided and can be avoided but uh, it shouldn't be so that uh, it shouldn't be like we should avoid instagram or instagram. totally like we can connect with our friends there would be low times where we we need to talk to our friends and they may console us yes. our family may console us yes. and there will be points of high where we may want to share it to the world share it to our friends so those things i think are part of the preparation journey and part of our life also and if we are more happy in, during our preparation journey then that, we'll be able to sustain for the more time true true, true. that will be an added uh, bonus yeah. in this process of journey yeah Uh, sir how would you describe entire upsc journey which you have gone through in one or two lines if you have to say <laughs> yeah so if i describe in short i'll say that upsc journey is comes with both uh, physical physical pain and mental pain yeah. and i i tried to link it with pain more because uh, the benefit comes to um, less people and the pain comes to more people, more people. so we should be clear headed while starting our preparation that it will come with pain and if we are we are ready enough to take up that pain then we should jump into the process and take a chance maybe like uh, every everyone who is not able to clear this examination or not able to get a rank are not bad uh, i mean are not less talented less talent. like i can i can confidently say that there are many many more talented person and very hard working honest in uh, people uh, who are preparing Yes. Uh, and much more talented than me at least <laughs> and yet they are preparing it's it's sometimes because of luck it's yeah. sometimes because of having a wrong path in our process so those things are part and parcel of the preparation so that shouldn't be uh, and that i mean that we should be mentally prepared for prepared that prepared for it yeah. that's what uh, right time right place right yeah. opportunity yeah, everything yeah. should exactly, come together exactly. to find that uh, beauty of this uh, success yeah that's what um so i mean on behalf of la excellence i'm again congratulating you sir and i Thank wish you, you a very Uh, successful career because at the age of 23 so you have cleared this prestigious examination and you have long journey to in being civil service career and uh, you will make very great strides is what i would definitely see with your experience and confidence 
and on behalf of every one of us i would thank you for coming down and uh, giving your word of advice to all the aspirants out there and people who are writing mails this time also it will be really helpful for them sir yeah, thank, thank you, you sir so thank you for accepting thank you so much thank you sir.